and we are live and recording. Hi, good morning and welcome back. Uh, my name is Gareth Wrench. I'm a programme consultant working with Mohammed and co at the Strategy Unit. And I'm the host for the next couple of short sessions um, before you all get a well-earned uh, extended break for lunch. Um, so next up, um, in terms of this morning, we have Eleanor Barnes, who's an analyst from the NHS Transformation Unit. And she's going to be talking about our shiny and transformation. So Eleanor is a data analyst um, at the NHS Transformation Unit on their graduate training scheme. And Eleanor has a background in the biological sciences and computational biology. In her time at the unit, um, Eleanor has been heavily involved in the team's transition to R. Um, so please, if you do have any questions, use the ask a question functionality. And at that point, I'll hand over to Eleanor to take her through. Hi, everyone. Yeah, hi, everyone. And thanks. I'm going to be talking about my experiences using our shiny and transformation. As Gareth says, I've been working at the NHS Transformation Unit up in Manchester for just over, over a year now on their graduate scheme. The Transformation Unit, it works in large scale transformation unit transformation programmes across the Northwest. What do I mean by this? Well, um, transformation is often referring here to these large scale programmes of change, that often moving services to improve patient experience and patient safety. The transformation unit works as an internal NHS owned, we're completely NHS owned consultancy and we're often involved in service re reconfiguration programmes. As a result, we're often called in to assist with modelling the strategic fit and also the viability of different op options that are being suggested. I work within a growing analytics team who provide support for these larger transformation programmes as part of a consultancy office to NHS organisations. Our focus as a whole team is on simplifying complex change, this kind of complex change and bringing it forward um, to improve services for patients. And I'm gonna be talking to you today about our journey in transforming our own in-house analytics process. When I started just over a year ago, the company held many models of static views in Excel. Analysts were using R for their more complex analysis but the models in the end would tend to be distributed to clients using Excel. Um, and we found that these models were often difficult to open, complex and unwieldy. We found that complex modeling in Excel could quickly become quite out of hand when we're dealing with multiple changing scenarios. Perhaps this quote from one of our clients might resonate with you. The problem with activity modeling is that as a strategist, I want to calculate outcomes from scenarios quickly without having to delve into monstrous Excel documents or wait days for an analyst to complete it. A number of our team were already our users, including myself, and we began to explore our options of transforming our static modelling outputs in Excel into these much more flexible R Shiny tools to solve that problem. I'm going to talk you through our first steps into R Shiny, through our reconfiguration apps and also our support during the COVID-19 pandemic. For those of you who don't know, Shiny is an R package and it's used to build web apps from R directly. They're very easy to write once you have an understanding of R and they're very, very simply deployed with lots of inbuilt features. So they're very user friendly. Some of our first steps were to engage the rest of the team to ensure that there was complete buy in from the team members. A lot of this process was training up some members of the team to feel confident specifically using our Shiny. To achieve buy-in from our Excel experts, we created a proof of concept, outputting every stage of the modelling to a CSV so that the process could be much more thoroughly assessed while it was still open by a familiar Excel screen. It was quite a lengthy process to convert an existing model into our Shiny, but this was really worthwhile to ensure that the team were on board and felt much more able to trust the outputs. As a coder for a number of years, it required a lot of empathy and patience to understand the position and the point of view of people who have a bit less experience and familiarity with coding. And I'd really encourage everyone to start up conversations within your own team about scripting if you haven't already. This screenshot on the screen shows one of the first tools that we made in our Shiny. It was a remake of previous work that we'd done in primary care um, and again was used as a proof of concept for the software. So in this tool, the user is able to upload their own data on a tab on the left um, and select a set of assumptions also within that left-hand menu. 
the tool then calculates the variance in staffing that exists across uh, selected model GP practices and compares this with published benchmarks. We really benefited during this time from the online support that there is within the R community and using open source software was a real bonus for our team for this reason. From a coding perspective, the model that we'd made in R wasn't as slick as it could have been um, and it didn't utilize all the benefits of using R but we'd achieved its purpose and we could move on to the next stage of our journey. On the screen, I've detailed our health system modeling process. We structure our activity and our workforce models into these modular components to simplify the whole process. What we tend to do is marry commissioner and provider baselines to generate an activity and capacity baseline, taking into account things like demographic and non-demographic growth. We use activity modeling to reconfigure services and generate a workforce model using this information. There's a lot of scope within this kind of flow to develop some really unique and localized sets of assumptions moving through that modeling flow, um, very specific to the locality, the situation of the NHS body that we're working with. Our overall ambition is to have our entire health system modeling process with all of these different modules conducted in R and through our shiny apps. Up on the screen, you can see a module from one of the, our reconfiguration models. This is the baselining section. We began to build our reconfiguration models in R using our Shiny. At first, we used our Shiny just to display our modeling outputs, which is shown on the screen. We then began to use our Shiny more extensively as a way of providing modeling tooling or software directly to our clients. We transitioned our transformational specialty level activity models to these much more interactive scenario development tools. We developed an app which allows the user, for example, to understand the impact of service reconfiguration decisions under different scenarios. And this can account for workforce, demographic and non-demographic growth assumptions. So this screen displays some of the outputs of our demographic and our non-demographic growth assumptions directly apl applied to the data. Moving on to the reconfiguration, the user is able to move activity from site to site and pool their activity. The benefit here for our clients is that they can create these hub and spoke services good for the good of patient safety. The idea is that the hubs are the safest places to deliver certain services due to the implications on things like workforce and training. This tool provided our clients to explore their assumptions, but in a much more structured and sensible range. It guided a lot of conversation and aided senior leaders to make these really informed decisions around strategic planning. So I'm just going to share some of the most important technical elements in the app that we created. Um, the top screenshot's a little fuzzy, uh, but up top you can see an extendable module that we have where the user can select a set of specialties and these specialties will then be, um, uh, will then be applied to the model. Um, I, the, the code that is, goes alongside this is, is shown below. Um, so you can see we're using reactive values iteratively assigned here in line seven with these double brackets. Um, we use Laply to apply this code throughout across however many specialties the user might select. And this makes the, this section of code highly extendable across a whole range of potential specialty inputs. Some of the next steps um, of our journey into R were really accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic. At this time, we experienced a, a much increased demand for flexible tools, um, which could react to that changing understanding that we had. So if you take your minds back to late March, early April, some of you might remember some of the confusion that existed around some of the key modeling parameters for COVID. So things like, oh, what was the incubation time? What was the likelihood of be being asymptomatic, for instance? We wanted to provide responsible modeling for our clients who were in the midst of that confusion. At that early stage, some research had been published. There was no code online, no workable outputs. We dissected these papers and created a much simpler version. We used classic epidemiological techniques such as SIR modeling and also lowest regression with dampening for the doubling time estimates um, to produce an estimation for the future growth curve of the virus. And this was really useful to our clients at the time who didn't have much access to these kind of things. 
solving these differential equations, these more statistical questions, were where R really came into its own, and you could really see the benefits of using it. On the screen, you can see that some of this modeling played a part in some of the apps that we created within our Shiny. As the pandemic evolved, we began to understand an emerging COVID crisis in care homes and provided analysis for the hospitals around the care home outbreak and what that might be mean for their bed requirements. We also began to understand the NHS discharge pathway into beds within the community. In order to understand the flow through the hospital and also out of the hospital, with the limited information that we had at the time, we constructed flows to model effects on community pathways. We treated our parameters as randomly distributed because we had a somewhat limited confidence in their applicability. We use this work to inform winter planning, which you can see on the screen. We generated a set of scenarios that either we uh, considered relevant or our clients considered relevant. So some of these scenarios you can see included a second COVID-19 wave in the winter, which unfortunately does seem to have transpired. Also things like a high or a low flu season, higher or lower elective or non-elective activity. Um, and this can all be uh, altered by the client on the left hand side. Initially, we sent a client our report with uh, regularly updated figures, but within the month, we transferred to uh, an interactive updated our Shiny tool. So on the left, as I say, the client was able to toggle buttons and sliders, come up with a potential scenario. And then on the right, this was then converted into the bed demand that they might require. So this approach used um, allowed our end user, our clients, to use their expert domain knowledge backed up by our statistical methods to develop these demand scenarios that were best suited to their locality. This benefit of providing flexible shared tools to our clients in an open source software such as our Shiny was really valuable and our Shiny really provided us that platform for change. In summary, we've had a whole host of benefits along our journey. Firstly, we're so much uh, more and better place to collaborate on these models than we were previously. We can easily segment off our work and bring it back together. And this has helped a lot by get inversion control systems, which we're increasingly looking to use. Secondly, the interactivity of our shiny apps has offered a whole world of use to our clients. And this is a benefit that we've realized looking specifically at our COVID-19 work, but also at our general body of work. This empowers the people that we really want to empower, such as the clinicians involved in our work streams. It allows the domain experts, as I've said, to use their knowledge to directly interact with the app itself. And this aligns quite strongly with our values as an organization, which is to empower people to make really good data-driven decisions. Thirdly, Shiny and R enables much easier access to a much broader spectrum of statistical and analytical techniques. We would have found it so much harder, for instance, doing the COVID modeling in Excel, uh, it would have been a barrier. But using R, this was a much more simple task. I really look forward to the future of continually, continuing to utilize these advanced analytical techniques within this work. Next, our, our Shiny apps are shareable. So where our work is sometimes shared to stakeholders far and wide across these large programs, it really helps to know that the analysis that we're producing can be centrally controlled. We can produce really professional looking analytical work at every stage of the process, even during these mapping stages where we're exploring different modeling options. Finally, and linked to the previous point, our Shine is open source. We can access this software really easily uh, and there's so much help and support available within the R community. The developers within R have created a whole host of great libraries, great functions with great documentation. Um, and even better, there's this great community where there's help and assistance available for even the most novice R user. And as a team, this, this support has been really invaluable. We've still got a way to go. We're looking at better ways to collaborate and using Git to do so. We're also trying to improve the branding of our content to ensure that all of our software has a consistent look and feel. But overall, it's been a really rewarding journey. I'm happy to share, by the way, any code that was used or generated during this process. Just drop me a line or an email. If you're not familiar with our Shiny, I've also included some resources up here. 
from what I've heard, I think these slides have been uploaded into the NHSR GitHub page. So please feel free to check these out. There's some um, videos included, some text-based tutorials, and also some really inspiring examples of great visualizations um, on this third link here. In particular, the winners of the Our Shiny competition um, are all there following that link. And it just gives a really great example of just what's possible in Our Shiny. Thanks very much for listening. Does anyone have any questions? Thanks, Eleanor. That was a really great session, really informative and detailed and yeah, really helpful to signpost to some of those resources just at the end there. Um, we, we have had a few questions just in the in the Q&A mm -hmm. session um, that we can just pick up quickly. Um, so the one that's got the most votes is a question around, yeah, do you host these shiny apps or do you outsource that aspect and share a link so to the So at clients? the moment we're hosting using shiny apps IO, um, which is able to, uh, able to take away a lot of the, the hosting difficulties that you might have on shiny server. Um, it's something that we've been looking into uh, over the past few months. Okay, that's great. Um, and there's another one here around, yeah, do you put your packages into a repository somewhere? I think you might have touched mm -hmm. upon that just in your, uh, again, your last Again, this is something slide. that we're really looking into developing in the next few months, um, putting in our packages and, and neatening up our kind of our whole workflow. This is kind of our next stage um, of our transformation. Yeah. Okay, now that's great. Um, and there's a question here around um, yeah, some of the benefits of using Shiny. So um, there's a colleague here who currently mm -hmm. uses Power BI with our, um, for most of their work, which, which operates fine. And what, what's the benefit of using Shiny instead for us, of uh, it's Power been, BI? It's been our Shiny being open source. We found, we found that the, the assistance, the help online has been really great. The variety of things that you can do um, is very very wide um and it's personally worked within the our workflows much better so we were using we were using our already we had some experience with our shiny so it became th this this real obvious choice for for our team okay no, that's great um, and there's just just one final question around yeah have you or will you share yeah your we're happy COVID to model? get um if anyone wants to get in touch around around the the covid modeling more than happy to go into it in more detail okay, no, that's okay. great um, and there's there's a few sort of complimentary um comments yeah coming in in the in the chat function great. as well so yeah just just to say really helpful uh, session there eleanor really really great for you to run through that with us um and we'll sort of yeah try and bring things to a close now and then we'll we'll get back on Back on time Brilliant. Uh, for this session, if that's okay. So, no, thanks very much. We'll give you a virtual round of applause. <laughs> no, well done, thank you. Brilliant. Okay, Anastasia, okay. if we can hopefully 